Welcome to Sat Lunch TV News. You're watching the News Hour with Angus Scott in London. It's Friday, the 28th of April. These are the main headlines from around the world. Sudan's ceasefire extended by 72 hours, despite fighter jets pounding Khartoum overnight. Donald Trump vows to crush Biden in elections, warning the US will descend into anarchy if Biden wins a second term. A wave of Russian strikes across Ukraine sees 12 dead. Parts of Spain are the driest in a thousand years as a deadly heat wave peaks today. And music created by AI starts to rattle the music industry. Sudanese fighter jets pounded paramilitary positions in Khartoum over the last 24 hours, while deadly fighting and looting fled in Darfur, despite the army and a rival force agreeing to extend a ceasefire deal. In the final hours of a repeatedly broken three-day ceasefire due to end at midnight local time, the army and the rapid support forces, the RSF, announced a 72-hour extension following pressure from Saudi Arabia and the United States. There have been multiple truce efforts since fighting broke out on the 15th of April between Sudan's army, led by General Abdel Fattah al-Bahan, and the paramilitary RSF, commanded by his deputy-turned-rival, Mohammed Hamdan Daglo. All have failed. Foreign representatives involved in seeking to quell the fighting welcome the extended ceasefire deal and urge full implementation. At least 512 people have now been killed and over 4,000 wounded in the fighting, according to health ministry figures, although the real death toll is likely much higher. Donald Trump has vowed Thursday to crush Joe Biden in the 2024 election, warning in his first campaign since his successor entered the race that the United States will descend into anarchy if the Republican billionaire isn't returned to office. The defiant address at a hotel in Manchester, New Hampshire, came with a twice impeached former president's legal woes multiplying, as a writer who accuses Trump of rape testified for a second day at a civil trial in New York. Trump told the 1,500 strong crowd that the choice in this election was now between strength or weakness, between success or failure, between safety or anarchy, between peace or conflict, and prosperity or catastrophe. Trump has consistently maintained double-digit leads in Republican primary polling, running far ahead of his nearest likely rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Russian strikes have battered cities across Ukraine this morning, killing at least 12 people in a barrage of missiles and drones that hit as Kyiv prepares an expected counteroffensive. The deadly attack included a strike on a residential building and came days after the leaders of Ukraine and China spoke by phone, with Chinese President Xi Jinping reportedly advocating peace negotiations. While Russia regularly bombed Ukrainian cities and infrastructure over the winter, the massive strikes had tailed off in recent months. An unusually early heat wave in drought-hit Spain is set to peak today, with temperatures expected to break April records in the south of the country. At least three areas around the cities of Seville and Huelva recorded temperatures of 37 degrees centigrade, with experts saying parts of the country are the driest in a thousand years. Scorching temperatures have prompted warnings about the high risk of wildfires. Spain has already seen fire ravage over 54,000 hectares of land so far this year. Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has told his Chinese counterpart that military deployments on their disputed Himalayan frontier were undermining relations and called for disengagement to preserve peace and tranquility. Relations between the two Asian powers have been fraught since a high-altitude clash that left 20 Indian soldiers and at least four Chinese troops dead in June 2020. The neighbours have since massed tens of thousands of soldiers along the border, who remain despite 18 rounds of talks between top military officials of both countries. India is wary of its northern neighbours' growing military assertiveness, and disputes over their 3,500 kilometer shared frontier are a perennial source of tension. 
Analysts have warned that any Chinese peace proposal in Ukraine may be a trap for the West. A one-hour conversation between Xi Jinping and Vladimir Zelensky this week was the first since Russia invaded its pro-Western neighbour more than a year ago. However, experts say China's proposed ceasefire would be rejected by the West because areas now occupied by Russia, including the Crimea and Donbass, would then be lost to Russia. This, in turn, opens up Ukraine and the West to accusations of being hardliners bent on rejecting a peace proposal. China's backing of Russia in the conflict has meant it is not seen as an impartial mediator. The UN has warned that Africa is facing a huge rise in deaths from hunger because of droughts worsened by climate change and conflict. Their warning is the latest in a series of statements from campaigners and experts warning that Africa is facing an unprecedented food crisis. There's a death by starvation every 36 seconds on average in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia, with close up to 20 million people in the Sahel region living in food insecurity. Iran has seized a US-bound oil tanker off Amman, claiming it crashed into an Iranian vessel, leaving two crew missing, the latest disruptive incident in the crucial but troubled waterway. The US Navy demanded the immediate release of the Marshall Islands flag tanker, saying it was transiting international waters in the Gulf of Amman and slamming Iran's continuing harassment of vessels. It is one of a spate of incidents since 2018 when then US President Donald Trump pulled out of a nuclear agreement and reimposed crippling sanctions on Iran, sending tensions soaring. Conservative politician Pateri Orpo, who won this month's general election in Finland, has announced plans to form a coalition government that includes the far-right runner-up Finns party. The Finns' inclusion in negotiations raises the possibility the anti-immigration party, which took just over 20% of the vote, could for the second time join a ruling coalition. The Finns party leader, Rika Pura, stated that immigration was a threat to both security and the economy in Finland. Paraguayans go to the polls Sunday for the country's closest presidential race in many years, with a centre-leftist coalition hoping to end an almost unbroken seven-decade run for the ruling right-wing Colorado party. The vote comes at a difficult time for the party that has governed almost continually since the 1950s, through a dictatorship and since the return of democracy in 1989, with several of its leaders recently sanctioned for graft by the United States. China has launched a new rehabilitation scheme for serious offenders. Convicted murderers are now being offered jobs as morticians. A lack of reform programs and skills shortages, as well as discrimination, has made it difficult for serious offenders to return to society. But the new innovative program aims to integrate former murderers back into society and give them the opportunity to atone for their crimes. And finally, a new song created using AI software to imitate Canadian singers Drake and The Weeknd has been removed from streaming services after quickly racking up millions of listens and sparking debate over the new technology. Released last Friday, Heart on My Sleeve was briefly available on various platforms before Universal Music Group, which publishes both artists, said it violates copyrights and asked for its removal. The use of AI in music is the subject of debate in the industry, with some denouncing copyright abuses, but others praising its prowess. You've been watching the News Hour on Satludge TV, and those were a few of today's main stories from around the world. Don't forget you can send us your opinions and thoughts that you may have on any of our news items to our email address. That's message at satludgetv.com, and we would love to hear from you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. For Satellite TV News, I'm Angus Scott in London.